time now for the Kit Car Championship finale. The cars sharing the grid today with those from the SR GT Challenge. Three drivers in with a shout of the title. One of them is Ian Kempton and the other is the former champion, Andy Hiley. OK, Andy Hiley, one of the contenders for the uh, Kit Car Championship here at the final round. Have you worked out what you need to do? Um, yeah, I think I've worked it out properly. Um, I need 11 points, which is either uh, second with fastest lap or a win. And uh, do you think you're going to be able to do that? That's what I've come to do, but whether I do is obviously another question. Uh, yeah, I think I can do, but I'll, we'll see. I guess it's been a shame this year. The kit cars have been down on numbers, but some of the racing we've seen and the races that you've enjoyed have been absolutely fantastic this year. I've had some excellent racing this year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very disappointing, the numbers. Uh, you can't quite fathom why the numbers have dropped off so quickly. The racing is good. Uh, I know it's not a one-make challenge, which... Um, Seems to be the most popular with new in drivers, but the racing's excellent. The cars are pretty well matched, so I don't understand why the numbers are so low, but yeah, the racing's been good. A real mix of cars on the grid then, the SRGT Challengers, these primarily pre-1976 sports racing and GT replicas, sharing the grid with the kit cars. Fastest was Andy Hiley, uh, four tenths of a second quicker than Clive Hudson, but Clive was penalised 10 grid positions uh, after an indiscretion in qualifying this morning, so he will start 12. Alongside Hiley on the front row of the grid is uh, Clark Gary Wilson, I should say, in the Crosley 9S. The second row has Cheng Lim in the Ram Cobra and the Silver Phoenix of Dave Caldercourt. It's an intriguing array of cars here. It's going to be a fascinating contest. Wait for the race to get underway. And it will do any second now. And who makes the best start? It looked like a, a good getaway there from Rob Johnston while well, he was well back on the grid on the inside of the third row. And he leads into Gerard's Bend for the first time in his uh, Class C car. That's the uh, Cyana MX500R. There you can see the number 17 car further down the order. And that is Graham Paddock in the Cougar Jaguar. Uh, John Moore, you can see, flashing through shot there in the red car with the green and white stripes. But it's Rob Johnson that leads. Second place is Gary Wilson. Then third place side by side between Cheng Lim and the Cobra on the outside line for the S's, Andy Hiley. He's going to keep it all the way around the outside, though, and will hold on to that third position as they make their way down into Shores. Heaven Hiley's going for second, and Hiley has taken second. If he can just get it stopped for the apex, which he can. So, oh, he spun the half spin anyway. He was very lucky not to go right back in front of the pack, so he drops down to fourth. Could be lower than that because he's going to be coming under pressure. So that means that Rob Johnson, after his cracking start, is out in the lead. Then it's side by side for second place. It looks like Cheng Lim has moved up into that second spot with Gary Wilson in third. Andy Hiley still only in fourth position, so uh, he made the best out of that spin. And Clive Hudson, after starting back on row six, after that penalty, carving his way up the order, ahead of one of the uh, Crosleys, the Northern Ireland-built cars there. These cars with the uh, Geotech engine these days. This is Ian Kempton from Class B. He comes into this final meeting not really able to improve his score, such as been his uh, record throughout the season, just uh, one non-finish during the course of the year. But he's out in the MK Indy, and uh, with uh, possible developments in a new car for next season, it could be the last time out in this machine. It's Johnston leading, but that mighty Cobra replica of Cheng Lim in second place. Not anymore. He moves up the inside into the Devil's Elbow, so Cheng Lim takes the lead of this race he wasn't uh, he was only a second or so slower than the pole position time in qualifying I think Rob Johnson is going to lose out here to Gary Wilson as well and Andy Hiley will be keen to follow through quickly then I think it's John Moore up behind Andy Hiley as we see the number nine machine of Anton Landon make his way through Gerrard's Bend but here come the the lead pack we should say and uh, well Rob Johnson isn't giving up without a fight is he he's having a look up the inside on the run down into Lake Esses but uh, in fact he's probably more going defensive from Andy Hiley who's going to try and stick it around the outside and he duly does so so the three fastest guys out there are now the top three on the circuit Sheng Lim with this uh, Cobra replica almost seven litres capacity and hundreds of brake horsepower at his disposal but that's not much use to him on his way into the heaven but look how he's able to pull away then from Gary Wilson in second Andy Hiley third but leading the kick car part of the race and there John Moore has made up some ground as well he was only eighth fastest in qualifying up to about what's that fifth position now he's just going to go past Rob Johnston on the outside on the way down to the Gerard's Bend Andy Hiley having a little look up the inside of Gary Wilson not going to be quite close enough this time around making their way down towards Lake Esses Hiley will tuck right in behind Wilson's machine and uh, will no doubt try and make a move they've all closed in a bit on Cheng Lim through Gerard's 
but then Lim obviously once they get onto the straight can pull away a little bit and then there's an almighty scrap going on behind and I think that's uh, Clive Hudson coming back up the order isn't it he's now up into fifth position just ahead of Rob Johnson and David Caldercourt and here comes Hiley to the outside for Shores that's not really going to work and David Caldercourt has been pushed under the grass there by Rob Johnson he recovers though the other driver involved is number six Nigel Brown so we're getting quite a long train of cars here disputing the lead of this combined kit car and SRGT race but it's the Cobra replica specialist Chang Lim that leads the way then second place is uh, Gary Wilson in the Crossley in third place it's Hiley another SRGT type car in a way this uh, Girotech engine car but it makes of course in the kit car championship now here Jack uh, a replay of what happened a few moments ago up at the hairpin yeah Rob Johnson is about the fifth car in this queue he's going to move across you can see at the top he moves across to take the racing line completely unaware that Dave Caldercourt is there he gets sent out onto the grass and Caldercourt quite frankly does a very good job to uh, get on and I think he might even hold off no he's just going to lose out to Nigel Brown and uh, Caldercourt there in the ex uh, Tony Southgate Silver Phoenix Tony Southgate the uh, race car designer of some repute this then the lead strap Cheng Lim leading and a new second place moment might have a new leader no uh, locking the uh, brakes there was Andy Hiley might even lose out to s for second position again oh and there's back markers ahead looks like there's one or two uh, Janettas involved there you've got the yeah two Janettas you've got the coupe uh, shaped car and also the more orthodox G20 that they lap now to one side oh and hang on who's this here Clinton Doyle where's he come from all of a sudden Clinton Doyle who started at the back of the grid he's charged his way through this pack and up into second position now out of Gerrard's they come so highly down then into third position and uh, they're making their way down the back straight towards the Lake Essence. It's almost three abreast, a little further back. It looks like it's Nigel Brown on the inside, but highly this time through Lake Essence is fairly uh, uncontested. And here comes Clinton Doral absolutely flinging the car through the corners, having a little look to the outside at Cheng Lim as they come down into the braking zone for Shaw's Airpin. That's not going to work. That could give Hiley an opportunity to get through. Very sideways from Doral. That's definitely going to give Hiley the chance to get through because Doral's on the grass. And that fake snake snaking around there. He's going to lose a place to uh, Clive Hudson as well in the Eclipse that the, the car that he debuted at this meeting last season a fantastic looking uh, piece of kit and there's more of them in build for the kit cars next season and oh now uh, this is Clinton Dole trying to go around the outside of Gary Wilson uh, the Wilson car the Crosley much lower to the ground of course Dole here losing ground the top two getting away Clive Hudson very sensibly backed out into Gerrard's because that could have been a bit of a incident but here come the top two as you say Ian down into Lake S's Cheng Lim feeling the need to go defensive even though Andy Hiley wasn't particularly close that could give Hiley a good run through because it's through the S's and Shaw's hairpin that uh, Hiley's car is potentially going to be strongest oh getting a few wheels on the grass there was Clive Hudson now he looks to the outside he was pushing very hard on the exit of Lake S's that could give an opportunity for Clinton Dorrell to come through and then it's it's all hell for leather behind them and it looks like David Caldercourt has been pushed right back down to the back of that group now uh, coming up to lap Tim Falsch now so one two three four five six seven nine cars is it for the lead of this race all spread out down the Kirkby Strait into Gerard's Bend Colton Course and Rob Johnston doing battle there at the rear of the train both of them in class C machinery in the kit car championship of course doing uh, battle for points from Johnston uh, the man likely and in fact he will finish ahead in the championship standings but he's going to finish no better than third overall in the points Here's Hiley then into Lake S's and he's the man coming under most pressure now from Gary Wilson on the run down into Shores. Once again Clive Hudson's there on the outside. Big lock up from Andy Hiley. He's locked up a couple of times so far today and the uh, the tyre smoke still pouring over the top of his car. I wonder if that is tyre smoke mm. as they make their way through uh, the Devil's Elbow. That looks a little bit ominous perhaps for Andy Hiley. Onto the Kirkby Strait once more and it's still just out in front. The Cobra of Cheng Lim into Gerard's corner. So second place is Hiley, third place is Gary Wilson, but this is good news for Andy Hiley, the Yorkshireman as far as the championship is concerned. New car for him for this season, but he was successful in his old Tadek, and he takes the lead of the race around the outside, but surely in a straight line that Cobra's going to get back through, and it does. And Andy Hiley needs to keep the door closed to keep that little crossly behind him. 
into Lake Esses once again. A different line being taken to Cl by Clive Hudson than to uh, anyone else. Clinton Doral is still in there. Oh, he's very sideways, just about. Manages to keep that sorted out uh, once again. Hudson going around the outside of Shores. is not quite going to work out, and that could compromise his run because here comes Clinton Doral to pull alongside him into the right-hander at the devil's elbow. Doral squeezes through, does he? Yes, just about. Although, <laughs> look like they were very close as they make their way down towards Gerrard's once more. And if anything, Cheng Lim's got a bit of an advantage but he's driving very, very defensively into Gerard's bend. That's how Hiley got the run around him last time. Oh, but here comes Gary Wilson. Hiley goes a little bit wide mid-corner. Not quite enough room for him to get through. And this is the final lap of the race. Down the stubby straight they go. So it's Cheng Lim, Andy Hiley, Gary Wilson, but Clinton Doyle trying to come around the outside here of Gary Wilson. He's trying to get around the outside of Andy Hiley as well at Lake Essies. And there was almost side-to-side -side contact between the two of them there. But Clinton Doyle, the uh, short oval racer, formerly back to out of that one and have another go at the hairpin around the outside veering almost towards the tay deck there uh, but uh, heart in the mouth moment there for Andy Hiley you should think who survives and he's going to come through and take second place in the race but the kit car win and the championship checkered flag goes out now then and Cheng Lim takes the outright win in the SRGT challenge and kit car championship race well <laughs> Clinton Doral pushing right to the last wasn't he veered out alongside Hiley perhaps he didn't even Notice that the uh, chequered flag was coming out this time around. Anton Landon there in the number nine machine crossing the line. But another great race, and here's a look at the results. Yes, just the results from the kit car part of the race. 1.2 seconds between Andy Hiley and Clive Hudson, who was second. John Moore took third position. The best of the Class C cars was Rob Johnston in fifth. The best of the Class B cars, Ian Kempson in seventh position overall. And let's have a look at the final point standing. So, as we said, Andy Hiley is the champion, but only by two points from Ian Kempson, who had a great year in that MK Indy, but not a lot of competition within Class B. Rob Johnson, third overall, and the best of the cars within Class C. So, Andy Hiley takes the plaudits. We will take a break. Join us again in a few moments for the combination of the 750 Formula Championship.